Today our topic is going to be on anti-aging. And Kate, I don't know if you knew this, but um, aging is the leading cause of death. In fact, it's estimated that over 150,000 people die every single day, and about two thirds of those die from age-related causes. So what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, when you actually put it that way, it, it makes sense. Um, I think logically, like number one cause of death is aging. I, I, that's a good thing. That means uh, we're, we're, uh, um, you know, we're, we're, we're not dying from car accidents and, and other crazy stuff. But at the same time, you know, if, if we can figure out how to um, create some, some uh, really good uh, health, I think, and it can create better life quality as well as um, longevity because could also be that um, we're just not being adventurous enough as a human race. That That's another potential thing, right? You, you never know, do you? Yeah, so so good. Well, um, so aging, I mean, you know, we. I, I love the saying that uh, everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. But uh, aging, one of the things that happened, even in the ICD-10, the new World Health Organization's ICD-11 came out, and they actually have classified age-related diseases. So this is a big deal. And now we have patients coming to us all the time, and they say, what can we do for aging? So there is a really powerful peptide, and one of my favorites, which is where I want to start today, because of all the peptides, um, this one is, has been the most consistent and the greatest results. And it's one of the top favorites clinic-wide. And this is CJC uh, 1295 with ipamorelin. So, so let's talk about that. And we'll talk about growth hormone just a little bit. So, so how many of you uh, are familiar with uh, CJC 1295 and ipamorelin? Any of you heard of this one? Okay, so a few of you. So, so let's. Uh, I'll, I'll first share my. Okay, a couple of you. Good. Uh, you know, the the number one thing is if you look at growth hormone, we have about a fifty percent decline in growth hormone levels compared to our mid twenties. Some of you may be in your mid twenties, and congratulations. Um, we don't hate you that bad, just a little bit because you're like such a fine specimen, but. Those of us who are twice your age or close to that, um, we, we have to work on our growth hormone pathways because every decade of your life, your growth hormone levels decline more and more. And so what does growth hormone do? Well, growth hormone is critical for your brain function, right? If you wanna have great memory, you need to have uh, really powerful levels of growth hormone. Uh, growth hormone works for alertness, uh, helps with concentration, it prevents Alzheimer's disease. Uh, growth hormone is also really good for the, your cardiovascular function. It helps uh, enhance cardio, cardiac functions, helps diminish your chances of stroke, heart attacks, uh, heart palpitations, irregularity, shortness of breath. Um, it even helps, growth hormone helps you burn fat. It's one of your major fat burning hormones. And we always tell our patients that you burn the most fat when you're asleep. That's because growth hormone turns on. Growth hormone helps your bone density, helps with sexual function. It even helps with immune function because our thymus gland, as we're forming in the womb, our thymus gland gets to its largest volume. And then as we're born, that thymus gland atrophies. And then by the time we're 80, it's the size of a pea. So this this big thymus gland here in our chest, it shrinks dramatically. But one of the things researchers have found is that if you can keep your growth hormone levels optimized, like they are in your 20s, then your thymus gland doesn't shrink. And so remember, the thymus gland is responsible for producing the, the intelligent white blood cells. So it's a really important part. <clears throat> growth hormone helps your sleep. It helps your skin. Um, it helps with increased collagen. It makes your skin, it, it diminishes wrinkles, it decreases sagging, it helps with thicker hair. So is there anyone on here who would not want to have a little more growth hormone in their life? So 
So, and, and many of you are probably saying, well, Reagan, but you can get cancer if you have too much growth hormone. And I'm with you. We're, we don't want to induce cancer because if the body goes just replicating unchecked, then um, that's not a good thing either. And so this is where in, in module one, I talk about the mTOR pathways. And then I talk about the AMPK pathway and how it's like this yin yang balance. And I explain <clears throat> how to use peptides to balance out these structures. So two of the peptides that we're gonna talk about today are CJC1295 with ifamorelin. And yeah, those are two peptides, but they're, they're, they're working in the same growth hormone structures. And then we'll talk about mod SC, uh, just a little bit, I'll, I'll just a little in, introduction there because mod SC is a, you know, it's an exercise mimetic mitochondrial drive peptide. We'll talk more about that in your diabetes and blood sugar regulation. So, so let's talk about CJC with epimorelin. Kate, you've used this peptide uh, for, you know, a couple of years, a few years now. Um, what's been your experience with this peptide? Um, I think uh ju just feels really good and really strong that that would be like the best way i could describe it is um gains in the gym gains um with uh you know in your workouts just feeling so much uh so much more um i i don't know the best i would say energy but, but it's it's a little bit different than that it's just like more umph yeah you got more yeah, and, and I, I think that's because, you know, some of the, the benefits of it, you know, you're going to have quicker recovery. Um, you have improved protein synthesis. Um, it promotes bone density, uh, reduced body fat. And so the CJC epimorelin, uh, you know, one of the things that epimorelin is, is it's a somatostatin inhibitor. And so it allows your body, somatostatin is what hormone your body has to help turn off growth hormones. So it's not always going. And so as we age, the somatostatins are even greater. It's kind of like having the principal walking the halls of the school. You know, you can't really have a lot of fun when the principal's around. So uh, so you get the principal out of the way and then the kids can have some fun. And that's kind of what the ipamorelin, that's its job is let's get rid of somatostatin. And the crazy thing about it is, is if you compare CJC1295 with like somorelin, um, what you're going to find is you're going to have about a four to five times greater pulse of growth hormone uh, with the CJC1295 and ipamorelin than you would with the somorelin. Uh, so uh, the the somorelin is is a you know kind of a Gen one or Gen two peptide, whereas the CJC ipamorelin is uh, is uh, a newer generation uh, peptide. So the way that you can use this one um is typically you'll dose it at 15 to 20 units so you use an insulin syringe and you go five days on two days off and that's that's the pathway you've got to do it 90 minutes after eating um this is this peptide growth hormone peptide specifically is very sensitive to the presence of insulin and it's even sensitive to the presence of um cortisol so make sure when you're using this your body's in a calm state Ideally, I like to use it before bed, or you can use it first thing in the morning. Um, some people do. We have about an eight percent um, of our our patient population. They notice that uh, by using this at night, it induces a bit of a, uh, a, you know kind of a rush because you you get that flushing effect. It feels like a niacin flush if you guys have ever experienced that when you when you inject these peptides. And so um, one of the things you can do is you can push that into the morning. But once again, you've got to wake up fasted and then you've got to wait 90 minutes before you eat anything to maximize the benefits so that you don't have a, the blood sugar spike. But, but, um, but this peptide, the reason why you want to go five days on, two days off, this is one that you'd cycle. You'd go about three months on. You can, you can stay very consistent on it and then uh, cycle off. But the five days on, two days off, uh, you'd, it makes it so you only need to cycle off maybe three weeks to a month, and then you can get right back on it. And this is one that I notice, you know, a big difference in our patients who have thyroid issues, you know, Hashimoto's, uh, we treat a lot of Hashimoto's, we treat a lot of diabetics, our diabetics do great on this. Um, I find people's sugar craving drops. Um, we even use this for our weight loss kind of in phase three, 
what you'll see in every single program that we take our patients through, we call it the three, four, five method of healing. Because some of you think, oh, peptides, I'm just going to start doing these one off peptide prescriptions for my patients. They all need to get on CJC. Well, um, they all don't. What you need to do first is take them through the three phases of care. So phase one is where you remove the triggers. So whatever those inflammatory triggers are, whatever the triggers are that are getting in their way of healing, get rid of those. That could be diet, that can be environmental, that could be um, anything from a physical trauma, that can be the emotions, uh, that could even be the uh, immune system. And we get, we're doing removal in phase one of the triggers. And a lot of times that can be like Lyme disease, that can be your Epstein-Barr virus, um, post-viral syndrome. So these things need to be removed. Then you go to phase two, which is the reparative phase. And then you bring in new peptides for the reparative phase and really start building from the foundation up. And then phase three, this is where you go into your, your regeneration phases. So this is, this is where you're really regenerating and rejuvenating the body. And phase three is the best because I have patients who've worked with me for years and they just, you know, we have an ongoing system where, you know, they have a peptide a month that they're on and then they're in this, this phase three. And so we're cycling through the different systems in their body. So it's a, it's a really great way of using this. So CJC 1295 with ipamorelin is typically not used until we get to phase three. Now, remember, we're talking about longevity and anti-aging in, in module one. So many of you have patients who they're in this stage and patients who you've already gotten them healthy, you know, you might be a functional medicine doctor or an integrated medical medical doctor. And these are great things, but this would be your, your stage three um, because uh, you would not typically want to start somebody on this right away unless you're just working on maybe some blood sugar issues and weight loss. Um, so uh, CJC 1295, uh, some of the studies, uh, they've shown that it increases growth hormone secretion, helps improve IGF-1 levels. And, and by the way, with IGF-1, um, we'll typically, in a lot of cases, we'll add IGF-1 to this, this mix. So this is one of the, the formulas that's my personal favorite. I'll do CJC-1295, ipamorelin, and IGF-1, and I'll dose it at about 20 units uh, per day, five days on, two days off. And uh, the beautiful thing about IGF-1 is it's more of a nootropic. You know, really helps turn on the brain, helps with mental clarity, helps with creativity. And I also find that IGF-1 is really good for dexterity and balance. And so it's just a really powerful combination. You can combine all three of those if you'd like. Um, but the beautiful thing is you'll have increased muscle growth, uh, increased fat loss. You'll see that it promotes deep wave sleep. Um, so you'll get more into that delta sleep, uh, which helps with muscle growth and memory retention. And then the nice thing is it works on your pituitary long after the, the uh, administration is, is done. So, so it does have about a 30 minute uh, period of time where it's continually working on your pituitary. And you may say, well, that's not very long, but actually that's, uh, that's a, a great opportunity for you to have a, an awesome release of growth hormone. So a lot of healing can happen in that. So, so what questions came through on this particular peptide, Cade? Um, so you answered quite a few of them throughout, okay. um, but we did have a, a few, let's see, please address IGF-1. You talked about IGF-1. Um, and sorry, Robin, um, supra physiologic, trying to get clarity for my practice. All right. So I think hopefully you got your answer on IGF-1. Oh, work. So you work with CKD, early CKD. Um, and IGF elevation isn't good. But I think with peptides, there are modulator benefits. Um, okay, sounds like she got that. Oh, and then the, the dilution that you're using when you say 15 to 20 units. Yeah, typically it's a 2000 micrograms per milliliter in a five ml vial. And so um, units are going to be, you know, that's, that's going to be like 0 0.20 mls sub Q. All these are subcutaneous as well with this peptide. Yeah, subcutaneous. And then I'm not familiar with this term, uh, Reagan, is, sure. is DAC good or bad, DAC? 
Yeah, DAC is a drug affinity complex, and these all have DAC in them. It's actually really good because it actually helps um, uh, the the uh, half life and the um, length of time in which the therapeutic agent is active. So yeah, they all are compounded with DAC. If you don't want it with, if you want to go without DAC, um, we use Wells Pharmacy. And maybe Kate, you could plug in uh, uh, Jerry or Justin's. Uh, information. Justin Kirkland's been a great collaborative partner in this project. Uh, Ryan Smith with TaylorMade uh, early on, and then um, obviously Dr. Kent Holtorf as well. So um, all of them have spoken on our stages and uh, work with me directly on this. So, all right. So um, hopefully that gives you a good, um, you know, you know, a really good place to think when it comes to anti-aging because our goal is is to really help maximize everything that's going on in your patients when it comes to aging and disease because you know the beautiful thing and yes there's other peptides like epitalin comes to mind or you look at even like the bpc157 or thymosin beta 4 i mean there's so many great peptides that all promote longevity but really the thing that we find is that you know aging and disease it's it's this you know loss of beta oxidation it's a loss of of redox so you've got the decreased nad you got to get that up it's the the decreased sirtuin activity the decreased growth hormone and igf1 the decreased mod sc which we're going to talk a little bit about next um and then it's also the loss of immune maturation and mitochondrial dysfunction i mean there's a lot of things you want to address when it comes to aging and disease which are all covered in the modules Hey everybody, Reagan Archibald here with Go Wellness. And if you liked this episode, if it actually helped inspire you to be a better practitioner, help more people, establish a much better foundation for your business, then I'm going to ask a favor of you. And that favor is to for you to share this with somebody you care about and love in the healthcare field. I don't mind if it's an acupuncturist, a functional medicine practitioner of any sorts, a naturopathic doctor, a medical doctor, any type of endocrinologist or specialist, we need to get this community strong and we can't do it without your help. So I want to thank you from the bottom of, of my heart for all the hard work you're putting in day in and day out. I know it can be a grind, especially with some of the chronic cases that you're treating, but this show will help transform the way that you think, help transform the way you practice and change the lives of thousands. Thank you for being part of our community. 